now that the great cool off of 2021 is starting to happen, are we working less in our garden? I mean, seriously, do you think that Batavia and I are working less in our gardens right now? I don't know. Let's find out right here on the Backyard Gardens podcast. To have a good harvest, one must plant good seeds and must also use the right kind of fertilizer. The carrots have grown large and firm. How good they will taste. Welcome to the Backyard Gardens podcast, where we talk about all things gardening and give the information out for you to be successful in your garden, whether it's your first or your last. We are your hosts, Ben, the backyard gardener, and Batavia, the front yard gardener. One in the country. One in the city. Now get ready as we dig deep into this wonderful world of gardening as we learn to grow and grow for change. Do you want to spoil the episode now or do you want to just wait? I'm a spoiler. No, don't spoil it. I won't let you. Damn it. I knew you would say that. I was hoping you'd play don't along. Don't go but saving mine. I want mine now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's starting. But before we start, I just want to tell you guys, if you want to support us, Sign up, patreon.com slash Backyard Gardens. We would love to have you. Uh, lots of cool stuff. So um, it would be greatly appreciated to keep this show running. So um, so our listener question is in a left field today for us. It is not one that we have a- answered yet of any sort. So I'm kind of excited to hear what you say. Lay it on me. You ready? This one comes from a podcast uh, listening site. I'm be honest, I'm not sure which one. They're kind of hard for us to retrieve questions off of, but I was able to get this one. And this comes from a special listener by the name of Miko. I believe I'm saying your name right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. From South Africa. Hey, Miko. Um, hi there. How do I chase birds out of my garden without using any force? There you go. Simple question difficult answer <laughs> i mean i i don't know like i i don't know um i'm i'm assuming it's because the birds are in turn pecking away at some of the veggies maybe some of the fruit um so and i only assume that because there are all kinds of things like bird netting especially for berries and fruits and things like that and I've seen other people complain of uh, vegetable damage from birds, but I just don't know. Like, I mean, if it were me, I guess I just create a cage maybe for the entire garden and let no. you know, and let the birds Why did roam. You, not, you know? Why did you not say scarecrow right off the bat? I mean, come yeah, on, well, let's I, be cliche I here. I thought it, and I did. I thought to myself, like, does it really, really work? You know, so I don't no. know if it works, and therefore I shall not submit. Well, there's it. a good book, um, which was actually has a movie to go along with it. It's called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark, and there's a story within that book that um, I I would read it to you, but it's not really that time. But there's a scarecrow in that book that's terrible that would kill everything. So you could use Harold as the name of the story. Look it up; it's a really cool story. But um. You know, netting, honestly, was it, every time I've heard it. That's the of, thing. The struggle is, and it could just be nuanced, right? So Miko said, how do I keep them out of my garden? Which, in part, I'm assuming they really mean, like, how do I keep them away from what I'm growing? But they course. could mean, like, I just don't want them in my garden area. Um, well, then you just have to, like, build a dome, <laughs> and you can't, so... Uh, I can't answer on that. You're going to have birds in your garden, and honestly, you want birds in your garden, because the birds will eat some of the Japanese mm-hmm, beetles, mm-hmm. Uh, stuff like that. You know, the mockingbirds and stuff. Now, let me say this. We're answering a question for South, for South Africa, which I know absolutely nothing about what lives in South Africa. So it could be totally different. But I would say if you're going to go the route of covering, then you need to build a structure around them. Because the people that I know that cover for birds, the birds still get in through mm-hmm, the cover. Yeah. Like because it'll be resting on top of the mm-hmm. fruits, yeah. right? Yeah, I have um, so, a number of different structures in my garden. Um, something as simple as a, if there's something a bird can perch on, the bird's gonna perch on it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, 
feeding birds away from your garden is a is a something that people say mm-hmm, do. Mm-hmm. So that's something you can try. Um, man, that's a that's a really hard one. I'm going to challenge our listeners because Miko isn't the first person to have trouble with this. We need you to share with us what you've done that's worked. All right. Uh, yeah. So write into your congressperson if you're in the U.S. and copy us. No, I joke. <laughs> no, but reach out to us and, and let us know if you have some effective uh, tricks and, and, and methods. You know, we, we already have a bunch of what we've heard. You know, I'm looking for something that you've done in your garden that um, have chased away the birds. Um, the only thing that I think yeah. about when it comes to because a part of my goal this year was to feed the birds right which i think i've done effectively hey spoiler um but there's also bird poop that comes with birds so there's that you know so i I get it like if you know yeah but it's minuscule you know what i mean unless you've got a flock of birds uh i will say that i i have a cat Mm -hmm. so and i know i know people I can hear it right now, but the cat kills the birds and they're the worst enemy of the birds and they're making them extinct. I know. I hear you. I hear you. But my cat is particularly dumb. She does catch birds from time to time, but she's not very good at it. And so she's better at scaring them away. So um, there is that. And there is a reason why people had cats on farms and stuff like that, because you got rid of rodents and, and whatnot because just uh, overall pest control mm-hmm. but um yeah that's a tough one i would say you can put like the one thing that people use around here is it can um it's not very slightly well you could hang like old cds up and stuff that the move reflection yeah and then when the reflection will but the problem is i feel like most animals get used mm-hmm. to that right there And so you would have to be moving it around. So you could use like old CDs if you're old like me and Batavia Mm -hmm. and you have them, even though she's way younger than me. (laughs) I just Um, look younger than you. Actually, I am older. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Pie plates a lot of people use for Mm -hmm. that. And then you can use like uh, ribbons and streamers and stuff. There is people that do that as well. But um, yeah, I don't really. Oh, another thing you can try is. A lot of people will put the owl things mm-hmm. in there. Have you seen yeah, these? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the head moves. But the that's the same thing is you have to move that owl from time to time. They freak me out, too. Mm-hmm. They do? Add it to the list. Add I, it to the list. <laughs> what owls do or the, those st- the statues statue, do? The statue. You know, the, the statue that people put up with. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have one in my yard. I should. But we have plenty of owls around us. So, I don't know, man. Yeah, I put it out there because we had that one question about rat poison in a Mm -hmm. garden and a listener stepped up and sent uh sent us a link to answer and to fix that problem Mm -hmm. and i was able to send it to the person so um yeah the challenge goes out to you guys let's help uh miko i believe it's Mm -hmm. miko in south africa so uh i would love and i would also love to hear what birds you have an issue with Mm -hmm. too just to be Mm -hmm. curious you know because i'm sure your birds are different Mm -hmm. than our birds there they have to be right i mean i think that the yeah, I'm, yeah, sure, but I, I think the idea of these flying creatures is probably the same. Um, yeah. So, that's uh, you stumped us on that one. I, I'll give you props. That's a tough one. Yeah, anything else to add? No, but I have a story to tell at some point uh, closer to the recipe of the day. You see what I did there? Yeah, stick around, guys and gals. So. So what we're going to do now is we're not even going to have a show. We're just going to go straight to the recipe of the day because I want to hear Batavia's story. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the thought of the show that we had. But uh, we're going to take this break and we're going to come back and we are going to talk about how hard we're working on our garden. Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Backyard Gardens podcast. If you like what we're doing and you want to continue to support the podcast, head over to our Patreon page to sign up. You can also make a one-time donation using PayPal. Both of these links are in the description. With your support, we can continue growing and helping others in their gardens. See ya. Leonard about screwed that one up. but <laughs> so, what's the, so what's the deal? Tell us. Break it down you for know, us. I caught my second wind, dude. Like, I... Um... Well, nobody's asking you if you're tired. So there's the rest of the sentence that I'll I'll go ahead and share. (laughs) So I'm not I'm not exactly sure what happened, um, but somewhere between the end, middle of August, end of August, 
I was just ready to say, you know, let's just have someone put the vegetables on my porch because, you know, I'm about just done. delivery yeah, service. Yeah, yeah. take done. them off the vine yeah. and just leave them on the porch for me. Um, but at some point, like early September, I caught my second wind. Um, it's I, I mean, I, I know it's tied to um, me starting some fall things outside like Mm -hmm. it's directly connected i think to me planting again and seeing Mm -hmm. kind of life in the garden new life in the garden i should say um and it's really like energized me um so i said that to say i'm absolutely working probably more in the garden now than i have in previous septembers it could also be a way that i'm stalling because I really need to get into my preserving for this year. And, you know, once I start that, it's kind of everything else shuts down. And so I'm po- putting that off, putting that off and spending my time yeah. outside instead. Um, it's busy work. Some of it, you know, just kind of muddling around. So, yeah. Yeah. I've been extremely busy um, working very hard in my mm-hmm. garden and i I was tired and I still, <clears throat> well, actually I'm very tired now, but that's not because of the garden. That's because of my surfing. <laughs> Good for you. Damn it. It's getting in the way yeah, of my no. life. But, um, we for sure, you know, just like you, I think what it was is I got rid of the problem childs out of my garden. So Come the on. tomatoes, that Come were ta- on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the tomatoes that were taken over, the cucumber that just looked like dog ass the whole time, you know, just diseased and sick. You know, you wanted to give it a damn vaccine out the gate, you know, getting those problems out and getting new life in and getting a new crop of problems to solve mm-hmm. is all part of it. Um, but I'm, I'm actively finishing up planting for fall at this point, I believe at the time of recording, I have s- around 60 days before my first frost. So it's like, you get it in or not. The problem I have is it's 90 degrees. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, there's that mm. as well. But we're managing that and just trying to get things in. But, you know, once I got those tomatoes out, I like, I, I got up one day and I do this every year, Batavia. Every year I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to cut my tomatoes down. I'm going to let them grow. I still see flowers. And then one day I'll get up and it'll be 6.30 in the morning on a garden walk and I'll take a pair of clippers and I'll clip them at the base and be like, oops, <laughs> that's it. So then I have to pull them down, you know. And I'm um, just doing that because my tomatoes were causing me problems this year because they were getting so big. What are you counting? I'm counting tomato plants. That you have left? Well, I counted the ones that I think I started with and then the number that I have left. So I started with uh, Sands the, the Volunteers because they're actually going well and they're everywhere. I planted 13 different tomato plants, individual tomato plants. You know, um, I, I really didn't have any duplicates now that I say that out loud. And I have pulled uh, three so far. So I'm down to 10. I, had, I planted 10 tomato uh-huh. plants this year and of my 10 nine uh no one two three four five six seven eight eight of them really mm-hmm. produced mm-hmm. So, yeah i'm not ready to do that math um, yet but i am very comfortable with um pulling the plants that were either sickly or I do. I, I take that back. I do had. I had two duplicates. It's the green zebra we've talked about previously, um, and so I pulled two paste tomatoes, uh, and then I pulled a green zebra, and I feel really good about it. Um, and I was actually saying to myself right. this morning, like, I had in my mind I was going to go out and do it. Then I get outside and I'm like, oh, I'm just going to take you know some of the fruit off. And then once I started taking some of the fruit off, like the ripe fruit, I'm like, it's so little left. And again, I've mentioned this before. I've had pretty good luck with green tomatoes coming out of the garden let's say in october before the freeze and they them ripening inside before rotting because that's an issue that we run into um so i mean i barely filled up probably like a three or four gallon bucket or something with the tomatoes i pulled off and i just felt good because i felt like I'm really pacing myself when it comes to the work in the garden. Like I still got a shit ton of vegetables from the summer, you know, and those vegetables are larger. There's still a pretty good amount of, of fruit on those plants. 
And so it just feels good that I'm at least three plants down when it comes to wrapping up the season and, you know, yeah. getting prepped to get the garden to bed. And I'm not, I'm pretty certain I'm not going to plant. I think I may sit some containers in those spaces where I pull those tomatoes. I don't think I'm going to bother with planting in the ground because I did my math. I'm about 45 days away from my, um, you know, average first frost. Um, so all of that said, the things I'm doing now are really kind of tending to uh, some of the newly planted seeds, newly sown seeds. And then I'm also doing, I'm still doing a lot of tying up. I have some vegetable plants that are just like, get me out of this raised bed. They're just like attacking everywhere. So you have a lot of summer plants still in your yeah, garden. I do and I will and I have. Um, so the only thing I have left in my garden from summer is my green mm-hmm. beans. Uh, I have my sweet potato bed, which in two days will be up and there will be a video about me harvesting my sweet potatoes because I'm going to go ahead and be fairly confident that I'm going to have a banging sweet potato harvest this year because them bitches are just poking out of the top of the soil. So either I'm getting tricked and played or it's good. So I'm going to do a video about it. Damn it. And I'm going to put it up no matter what. I just hope it's not a big wah, wah, wah. Um, so I'm going to be doing that this week, actually. It's becoming a tradition now. Uh, around my birthday, I harvest my sweet mm-hmm. potatoes. So we're going to do that. And then I also have my black eyed peas. And that's all I have left from summer. Everything else is fall in my garden. Oh, and I have a couple um, jalapeno plants. And my eggplants are... I'm, I have two eggplants. And as soon as the fruits that are on there are ripe, they're gone. I'm just going to let them finish mm-hmm. up. I'm not going to let them flower and go back because at this point, uh, the sun is definitely lower in the sky. And I know you guys are like, you shut up with the sun being lower in the sky because it's all you always talk about that. But like, I'm really seeing it, really noticing that now. And my garden's getting about right at five and a half hours of light a day. So anything left to produce that needs a lot of sunlight is going to struggle. Yeah, I uh, you know if it's not going to produce at all. So I didn't tag it, but I looked back at my receipt. So remember, I mentioned I uh, planted kohlrabi. I had purchased some starts for kohlrabi. Uh, it's a tongue tie, so I say I have to say it a little bit slow, so I don't stutter my way through it. Kohlrabi, uh-huh. not that slow, but um, so anyway, four plants, and I had put two, three of them inside of one of my raised beds um, that okay. had a cover on it. And then I had one that was just sitting kind of in the center of the backyard in a um, a grow bag. And I can't remember. Yep. I think one of them was larger than the other. So I probably, who knows, I think maybe I put the larger one in the grow bag. But the, the one in the grow bag is kicking ass. Like it's, I'm probably a week and a half away from harvesting it. I mean, it's definitely edible nice. now. But the other three that were in the raised bed, they're kind of like looking around like, I mean, it's dark over here. What do you want us to do? So that one, yeah. that bed is closest to uh, my wooden fence. And so when you think okay. about and it's facing east, right? So when you think okay. about how the sun rises, it's only getting just a smidgen of sun in the morning. And then it's coming all the way back around to that evening sun or afternoon sun. Uh, so that, and I noticed in that same bed, some of the so uh, seeds I direct sowed are slow to move, right? And so again, it's to your point, it's getting so much less sun. I pulled two of the three that were in the bed out and planted them somewhere else. So when we talk about like how hard are we working in our garden, it's little bitty things like that. Like, you know, maybe everything is fine. You have guests coming over, but you're still, you know, refolding your the towels in your bathroom. Like you're doing things to busy yourself. And it would be fine right. if you left them as is. Um, so that's kind of where I am. I'm definitely on water patrol a bit more, again, because I have a lot of, like brand new seedlings um yeah i do i have i mean outside of the tomato plants i've not pulled anything else from summer so everything i started in you know may and june is out there my melons and things like that cucumbers like i'm back to the very beginning you know how you get like a cucumber a day or something (laughs) you're just like all right okay i'll enjoy this i'm back to that as they wind down um so i'm still spending some time daily i'm still doing my daily morning walks Um, I'm probably spending half the time in the morning than I was outside than I was a month ago, you know, uh, a quarter of the time than I was like three months ago. Um, so I don't know if you saw the Instagram story I put up last week. Um, 
I I put kohlrabi out. <clears throat> it took mm-hmm, off. Mm-hmm. And then something happened. Whatever happened. Oh, no, we had a bunch of hurricanes go by, and the surf got real good. So I just went surfing <laughs> for four days straight. Didn't even go in mm-hmm. the garden. I came back, and um, the cabbage looper, I mean, they just demolished yeah, I saw them. that. And so, like, I had David out there. And, you know, I was like, all right, David, you know, come out here and help me. And he's like, all right, daddy. Yeah, sure. And so you're going to get a kick out of this. So Kelly comes out. Yeah. Kelly came out to the garden. I know everybody. I hear you cheering because I was doing the same thing. And she brought her bearded dragon out and set him in the garden. And he was sitting there picking up roly polies out of the garden. Love it. Love it. Love it. (laughs) But I had David and I was like, look, you know. And I've kind of had this conversation with him before, like, hey, if anything ever happens to me, I want you to know how to do this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Especially with this whole pandemic mm-hmm. going on. It's like some real talk mm-hmm. shit going on in my house sometimes. So I was like, you know, I just trying to teach him little bits and things. And what I'm really trying to teach him is like, because I feel like he and Kelly could get together and figure out how to get a seed in the ground and mm-hmm. get it going. Mm-hmm. But when it came to managing pests and stuff, that's where things can go wrong. So I had him, I was like, all right, first thing you do, I was like, you see these leaves are all tore up. I was like, flip it over. And it was just covered. Yeah. And I was like, he was like, what do we do, daddy? And I was like, you just start pinching mm-hmm. them. And I was like, first thing you do is, and then I told him about treating and stuff. So he was sitting out there forever and he was just his little fingers, man, just getting in there and just <laughs> smushing them up. And um, I came back behind. I was like, all right, I'm going to come back behind you and check. He didn't do anything. You know what I mean? He thought he was on top of the ring. He's like, I'm getting him, daddy. I'm doing it. And so I looked and it was just covering. I was like, here. I was like, son. And so we sat there and we did it together. And I was like, now let's wait a day and come back. We're going to, because it was the water the next day. I said, you're going to let it water. And then the, that night we're going to come and we're going to spray. Yeah. And so we sprayed our BT yeah. on it and stuff. And so just kind of teaching him the method yeah. of it because it was so bad. I mean, it was like they were unrecognizable. And he's like, well, what do we do now? And I was like, well, you have two options. And you can either throw them out or you can try and bring Mm -hmm. them back. And they were far enough along where, you know, and there's enough leaf left where I think they'll be okay. But um, it was just, it's definitely like, it was a shocker to come out and say like, this whole summer I've been worrying about Japanese beetles, aphids, you know, all this stuff. And then you come out and you're like, damn. Mm -hmm. It's this whole new pest all over again. So. Yeah, I pulled uh, some of my um, celery up. Remember celery? Remember, I never talked about planting celery. And it's... Yeah, I'm still mad at yeah, you about I'm that. Yeah, I'm probably... We, might, we almost broke up, <laughs> just so you know. I'm like a month uh, <laughs> late from pulling it. You know, and that matters, right? right? And so I had um, blanched it outside, covered the uh stalks with noose or well, it was a paper bag tied it up to you know the intent is to have you know um uh, prevent the sun from getting to it and when you do that it's supposed to yield a lighter uh sweeter less bitter stalk for the celery i did that like a less peppery flavor um i don't i, don't, I wouldn't you know describe kind of, it's kind of peppery. celery as peppery but whatever flavor you're thinking of is celery it's supposed to be right. less of that right so yeah because now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I've, I've flirted with the idea before. I've heard celery is kind of difficult to grow, but that flavor is very pronounced in mm-hmm. homegrown it celery. It absolutely is, because I tasted okay. the celery stalks before I did it. Like, and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> like, was it yeah, tough? Well, no, it was It was tender. It was still, like, crunchy or whatever. No, what I mean, was it tough yeah, to eat? Was it, it was like, very ugh. strong. Um, and I think you could get used to that and just be fine. Um, but thinking about putting it in dishes, it would be very pronounced. So, anyway, this is a technique that you do. And it said you're supposed to do it two to three weeks before you are ready to harvest, which is a whole kind of like, oh, well, I don't know what. I don't know. Am I going to be ready in yeah. two to three weeks? But anyway, I did it at the end of July. Here it is at the beginning of September, and I'm just pulling the uh, the celery. Right? You know, it's like, what is that, six weeks later or something? But anyway, yeah. um, I bring it up because all of it looked pretty good. I could still see the top, so I could kind of gauge, like, am I letting this go to waste? But inside of it, remember, it's covered with paper, and it has... Um, uh, some a little bit of soil inside but it's kind of smothered and so i pulled one up and i'm like oh that's where the aphids are in my garden and i was looking yeah. like oh yeah yeah i was so tempted just to toss it but i'm like all right i'm gonna clean you up 
We're going to eventually take you inside. Um, but it's that thing. That's one of the big pests I have this time of year, aphids. And it takes some time to either one, get it under control or just minimally clean it up if you're actually harvesting the vegetable. Um, so it's more than anything, my work beyond the things I started, my work for my summer vegetables, it's just trying to make sure I make good use of everything that I have planted. Um, I do want to just mention that I am constantly outside thinking about what I want to do next year. And it's a peaceful oh, thought, though. It's, you know, <laughs> but I, I still have it, but not a complete thought. Like, <laughs> I start yeah. and then it's like, oh, is that a butterfly? I can tell you. So, okay. <laughs> I have a question to ask you and then I'm going to come back mm-hmm. to that. No, actually, I'll go the other way around. So, yeah, I'm looking at my garden, too, and for next year, but it's very anxiety producing. Mm-hmm. And all I have to say is thank God for THC because it's like because I, I keep mm-hmm. thinking like, I'm ready for yeah. it to happen. I'm ready yeah. to do it. I'm ready to do this now. And I tell myself, like, I got six months yeah. to wait before I can plant again. Yeah. So, um, you know, anxiety is a big thing for me when it comes to that, because I want I'm such a get out and go do it, mm-hmm. go do it type person. Um, now, I will say the question I wanted to ask you was. What about that guy that decide or gal? that decided to cover their celery plants for two to three days to get the flavor to go down. How the hell do you think they came up with that? Two to three weeks. Two like to how did they stumble upon that? Like, yeah, like it had think to about have been that an accident. thought process. No, it had to have it, been an... So how do you accidentally do that though? I think maybe there is some bit of like, maybe some other vegetables that shadowed out the, the celery and when they pull the celery compared to some other celery that wasn't getting shadowed out, they realize, you know... Oh, wait, this is paler and sweeter, if you will. You know how I feel about when we talk about these vegetables being sweet. Or it was like a. Especially celery being yeah, sweet. Yeah, or it was I mean, let's a be real, real scientist that studied and knows why that that uh, taste of celery is produced and how the sun impacts that, yada, yada, yada. One That's or the crazy. other. But thank, That's thanks crazy. That's crazy, though. Yeah, it's, it's like the same person who decided, like, you know what? I'm going to make this cucumber grow up. <laughs> You know, <laughs> just like randomly, like the first person to do that. So, um, so in your garden right now, I know you kind of alluded to it. What are some of the things that you're working hard on your garden for? And more importantly, and this is something I do want to spend a little bit of time on. You only have 45 days left. Are we wasting our time working hard in our gardens right now? I mean, seriously. So I know that my first frost date is next month. And I looked at it and said it's the end of the month until I did the calculation on my favorite website. Uh, um, I which is time and date dot com or something along those lines. Um, yeah. I didn't realize it was 45 days. And because we were in the middle of um, this episode, I had to suppress my oh, shit, it's 45 days. You know, <laughs> 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 but let's I mean. You know, we harp on this a lot, but I think it's important is the reason why is because we're planting plants that can handle that light frost. Yeah, yes. And subsequent light frost after that for, you know, the weeks or two weeks that you're going to get them. So, yeah, I think um, some of the things you're right, I'm absolutely planting that will survive it. And other things, I'm basically going to get the one harvest in the next 45 days and be okay with that. And other things I'm not going to get anything from. And that's okay, too. Um, So, like, again, the hard bit, I think, I think, to be frank, the probably the hardest is trying to keep things organized for myself. Like, trying not to make a mess of the garden this late in the season. Um, And that takes some real energy. Like, I'm looking at the garage and like, okay, looking forward to a cool day so I can get that organized for the kind of the close out of the season. Um, I haven't even got to the point of talking about when and where I'm going to plant garlic, you know, um, amending the beds. Like those are the final tasks that I'm trying to basically manage my daily activities and, and chores now. So that's not some really big deal when the time comes for that. Um, so, I mean, I could walk away from the garden for a week and it would be fine. You know, yeah. that's the reality. We're not getting as much rain as I wanted or thought. Um, dude, we haven't had rain in a month yeah. here. It's it's really hard to start seeds when you're not getting any rain. Just for the which record. means I'm out there, you know, watering <laughs> daily. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm every day I'm turning on a sprinkler um, for two reasons: one to get seeds going, and two to keep crops cool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're in, um, as you guys know, I'm in a heartbreak zone. So it'll be 90 degrees today, and then you know it'll stay this way for a while, but then just like that it'll drop. So you can keep producing and producing and producing, and then nothing. And that's really an issue for us um, to try and be productive. But, you know, it's all about trying to one. So I had the shade over the garden that I added and it really did its purpose. Nothing bolted. And then I took it down and now I'm like, oh, maybe I need to go put it back up, Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because we had some winds come through and it was kind of I didn't want to tear up the shade. I'm like, look, first year didn't really get it for fall. So so much is mostly for spring. Let me be careful, and um, I still it's still sitting out in my yard. I might go put it back up. I'm not I'm not sure what I want to do yet, but uh, you know all those things to keep it cooler. What I'm trying to manage now, and I'm also getting my greenhouse ready to mm-hmm. plant. So I was worried, and I've said this before that I, the soil is going to get hydrophobic, meaning it wouldn't absorb any water. And I've got a sprinkler set up out there, and I'm just watering it. You know. I'll give it a long water, a short water, in the night, in the day, kind of going around. I amended the soil. And I'm going to tell you, I did not water it one time since April. And I had tomatoes in there. I had basil growing. I had carrots growing. Like, nothing died. I don't know how. And the soil was like dust. I, I don't get it. You know, it's amazing. They're resilient. I... They really are. So, but, you know, last year I started it because I had to build it. I started it in the middle of October. So I'm looking to get a month head start on that this year. So we'll see. But it was when I started it last year, it was getting to 120 degrees in there. This year I have a shade cloth, okay. so it should be able to keep it cooler. Yeah. Let me ask you, are you, because you talked about you're working really hard and I know for many, the garden season's coming to an end for them. And it kind of feels like, are you working that hard? And it's, you know, it's the end. But for you, and just a tinge for me, it's not really the end. Like a month and a half is a lot lot of time, right? You can get a lot done in a month and a half. You can't grow a whole lot from the beginning in a month and a half. Um, But you can can get some things done in a month and a half. So I want to ask, do you feel like you're starting like new projects and if so is it because you basically are going to be gardening into the into the winter even uh what do you you mean when you say new projects well in my mind i'm wrapping things up things are coming to an end i'm looking at plants thinking how much more do they have to give right like i'm preparing for the wind down and i wonder for you because you probably have another solid two months because a lot of your veggies now are fall in the in the garden you probably have another two months right are you really Mm -hmm. are you starting things anew or are you still just managing what's ever already there vegetables and the garden uh, as a whole so when when you say projects i was thinking you're meaning like building building new garden beds stuff like that you can roll that in there a little bit i asked so i'm definitely not building new garden beds yet um i've you know i laid down the cover crop in the back to potentially um, do the gamble of adding two more arches. So I'll, I will probably add them. I'm worried that I don't get enough sun mm-hmm. back there, but I'm going to have to just cross that bridge. And if not, you can check Facebook Marketplace for a uh, couple arches one day <laughs> next year. But, um, you know, I'm not really opening new projects like that. I'm just switching my garden over and I'm really amending my soil as well as I can. And I'm preparing for winter because you and I were talking about this earlier, how garden is gardening is a lifestyle Mm -hmm. for us. And part of my lifestyle is to prepare for the next season ahead of time. So if the, if winter is coming, then I need to think to myself, what's going on in the winter? What can, how can I be successful for next year? And one of them is my compost. So it's like, I need to flip all of my compost over now while it's still warm so I can get another one cooking. So by the time the cold gets here, I will already have a hot compost system work yeah. going. Um, you know, I'm trying to get my gar- my greenhouse up, up and going and productive. So getting all these things going, because I feel like even though I can grow, so I can grow outside in the wintertime, kind mm-hmm. of. 
Um, you know, it's like I just said, it's the heartbreak zone. So we can get a whole bunch of warm weather, but then we get something cold and it can just take out a lot of the tenders. So I always plant this time of year thinking, okay, <laughs> I'm going to have this opportunity to grow lettuce, but it's not going to yeah, last. No. You know, like it will go away, but my turnips, they could very well go. So, and like I said, I think it was the last episode. Um, if you haven't heard it, you should check it mm-hmm. up. Um, things will grow, but they will sit stagnant. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just preparing everything for those to kind of mm-hmm. happen. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It's, but and it looks a lot like what's happening in, in my space, meaning there are a lot of things that I'm doing that are for the now, but there are also a lot of things that I'm doing are doing for like the, you know, kind of short term and longer term. Right. right? So I, uh, I got my annual coupon. Actually, I think it happens like twice a year. It says, you know, 10% off of your purchase up to $200. It's from Home Depot. And I'm like, all right. You know, so I'm going in and I'm loading up. Um, oh, so public service announcement. And I think this is US wide. So the website is 11% rebate. I'm going to get it mixed up. But in our local area, Menards has always like 11% off for a rebate. Make your purchase. You have to mail it in. It's a pain in the butt. But hey, Home Depot also has that, right? It's electronic. So you can actually take your receipt. And it has to be for a qualifying time. There's certain time periods. I think they basically try to mimic other stores that offer this. But you can um, submit it. I think I have like $50 worth of uh, store credits they send you back. Um, for basically the rebate. Let's talk about savings. So insert that in as a savings tip. Um, But anywho, so you load in, I'm going to pick up compost in part because I don't want to have to do it next year when I have, when the mood strikes me, you know, and I want to say, hey, I'm going to get out in the garden. Um, I actually went before we started recording today and picked up some straw. And in part, I did it because I do have a leaf connect but you just never know what's going to happen, right? I know it seems kind of like what's going to happen with leaves, you know, like, um, but right. I thought I'd pick up some mulch because I was working on a bed and I really needed something to cover it with and I didn't have any more leaves. Uh, so I picked up this straw, same straw I used earlier in the year. So these are all the things that I would never stop and do in June or July, you know, even right. August, right? You know, so do I need, absolutely need to do that? Do I need even these products right now? No. Right. I could get by without them, you know, yeah. um, but it's the let me fill this time with these garden things that I ultimately will have to do at some point. Um, well, that's part of the lifestyle thing yeah. I was talking about, too, is doing that because, you know, it, being ahead, one step ahead. Like, imagine if you didn't do any of that and you just let the garden go. And then in the spring, you're like, all right, let's go. You would it would take you forever to catch I've up. I've lived that life. You know? And that's. That primarily is what when I joke about it and it's the reality when I say normally my garden is planted in June, sometimes as late as July. It's not just because I rolled out of the bed on June 15th and said, hey, I want to plant some things. Let me go and pick up some transplants. No, it's taken me that much time to get the garden in an order. Right. You know, so over the years, I've either been satisfied with that and just, you know, begrudged it that spring, you know, early summer and work my way through it. Or I've gotten smarter over the years and I started to do a little bit more when I'm still in the garden spirit, you know, in the fall. Right. It takes it. I mean, it's some I have to drag myself out to do these things sometimes. Um, But it also is a reminder that I'm able to still connect to this garden and outside. I may have on flip flop shorts a t-shirt and a jacket, but damn it, I'm out there and doing it. Cause I also know like to your point, it's going to save me some time and energy um, come spring. It's kind of like putting on the afterburners right now. And you're just like, all right, we're going to get through it and we're just going to power through. We're going to get this stuff in mm-hmm. there. And then, you know, cause so for me, like when I flip my compost pile, um, I don't usually flip. I stir it, but I don't do a full flip. I do a two bin compost system where a lot of people Excuse recommend me. a three bin. Uh-huh. Uh, God Thank bless you. you. So what I do is I f- right now is I'm going to flip it all the way over. And so everything at the bottom is going to be 90% done. So what I'm going to do at that point is then I will add it into my garden when it's almost complete and that will allow it to continue to break down within my garden over the winter, you mm-hmm. know, and it will keep it warm. 
to at first, but then it will break down. It'll feed. There will be worms in it and stuff like that, which in turn can get down into my garden. So, um, you know, it's just all about planning ahead mm-hmm. because I can't. If you're doing it that that way, you have to have time to do yeah. things. You know, you have to have time for your compost to mm-hmm. cool and to age. And so this is just kind of the way to kind of stay on top of that, you know. And the same thing, like, well, what we'll end up doing is we will muck out the chicken coop. And then we will have that manure. And we can add some of that manure into the garden as well just to let it break down over the five months. So my plan is for two of my beds to once I harvest out of them, they won't be used Mm -hmm, at all mm -hmm. for the winter. So the plan is to add that stuff in there. And over the five months, let them break down and age and then just be able to feed the next year's garden mm-hmm. right away. Yeah. So um, that's really, that's the goal. That's the plan. Um, I'm spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to water certain areas more efficiently next year. Um, I'm not changing from overhead watering, but I'm just changing a different type, a different type of sprinkler or something like that. So I'm, hand, I'm back to hand a lot watering of now. Going into that. Yeah. And primarily because I have things growing at such different rates. Um, yeah. And we are still getting into the place where I am watering overall less. I, I spent a whole like six, eight days delaying the sprinkler timer. Like, all right, I'm not ready to water. Mm. No, let me delay it. Let me delay it. And then I finally remember there's an off <laughs> setting. <laughs> and yeah. So I'm like, let's just turn you off. Um, yeah. But I, I look at this and I say, um, as I kind of go through not only what I have to do now, what I want to do now, then what my plans are next year, it definitely gives me some time in the garden to, to just kind of be. I mean, we talked about this last year. The amount of time I spend working in the garden is a great amount of time. And I enjoy most of it. Right. But to be right. able to kind of mill about like I've had a half a cup of coffee while just looking at the garden, which is like not normal, my normal. Like I'm dragging my right. cup of coffee around in the morning. But, you know, a third of, of the way down, I'm like digging bugs out of it, you know, because I've, I've kept myself yeah. busy and I've not been able to, to actually stop and drink. Um, but now that story is a little bit different for me. Um, so, Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, for me, everything is so young at this point that there's nothing to really check on. Well, you know, let me ask you about expectations because again, again, forty five days out for me, I've tempered my expectations, and maybe it's I don't think it's defeatist. It's kind of like, oh, you know, I'll get something off of this, you know, but I won't be completely destroyed if you know. Do you know what that's called? Experience. Yeah, let's take it. You know. You know what your garden is going to produce. You know the conditions within your garden now. You know, it's just like with me. And it's like I was talking about the sun earlier. Like, I know now that it's lower. So I was able to say, you know what? The tomatoes have to go because they're not going to produce. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get enough sun mm-hmm. to sustain life. And and my black eyed peas, I, I was looking at another day and they're starting to yellow. And so, you, you know, you're like, well, what's going yeah. on? Is it a deficiency? Yeah, it's a deficiency <laughs> of sunlight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and so it's just like if they're coming to the end of their their mm-hmm. growth pattern for the year. Um, you know, I'm taking this time to really reflect. Like I went out and I harvested my black eyed peas yesterday and I was reflecting. I'm like, this was a big gamble for me mm-hmm. and it paid off. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we're looking at roughly getting about a pound of beans and I could have double planted on the row and planted another row. And I didn't because I wanted to see what it would mm-hmm. do. And I'm glad I didn't, but now I know, like, okay, I got yeah, this. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I know what it's going to produce, like, a good yeah. move, you know? So, we have other things that we have started as well. Um, but when it comes down to it, like, I don't ever stop working in my garden. I work in it year-round. It's, it will slow mm-hmm. down, but there is always something. And when I say garden, I mean, like, cleaning out my shed. You know, like there's definitely a time in February that and this year, probably sooner where I'm going to really go out there and just, you know, figure out how to clean it out, organize it and be able to keep Mm -hmm. it that way. So that thing, because I mean, dude, the other day, this is ridiculous. I walked around and I'm like, where are my pruners? (laughs) Where are my pruners? I walked around for 30 (laughs) minutes looking for my pruners. And I'm like, this is, you know, because I don't have a good place to set them. Yeah. 
So um, I lost another pair of pruners. They'll come up, but they've just disappeared. Mm-hmm. So it's all about trying to find ways to, you know, for me, that's all part of working in the garden as well. Yeah, I'm glad. Not physically in the garden, but garden I'm glad that you mentioned it because um, I will get, there will be a break in the working in the garden space for me. And it probably comes somewhere around like somewhere in December, maybe. Um because it's before I'll start seeds again, because I still attribute things like when I start seeds indoors for 2022, that's still garden work, you know, yeah. um, while I may not be outside because snow is, you know, two feet high, <laughs> but I'm still doing that work. And um, a part of what I want to do as we kind of get towards the at this point, we're at the beginning of fall, like, you know, when we air this episode. Um, but there absolutely are those activities that I'm doing for fall that all things considered, if I look back over the year, it's not the hardest of the work that I need to do for the garden. Um, but right. to the earlier point, all of the things I do from now until, you know, when we say our last goodbye for this season, it all is going to attribute to how how prepared I am going into 2022. Right. You know, so I keep on kind of replaying the beginning of the year for me and why it seems to take me so long to get started. And each year it's because of what I did or didn't do the previous kind of closing season. Um, Right. And while I'm able to, while I feel good about it, I want to make sure I get as much kind of accomplished. And that's a part of like the garage piece, too. Like I use it a lot for storage. Clearly, I also want to park my car in there, but it's really like, how can I make this functioning and and how can this be a comfortable space for me to work in? So I'm still I'm on year two of trying to make that happen. Yeah, I mean, I save all of my maintenance and stuff like that for winter. And, you know, that, you know, I mean, let's face it. We're just buying time until we can plant again. So it, it allows me to add time to do that. What are you looking at? Oh, just, you know, reminiscent. I'm looking at the flowers. My um, hibiscus got a second wind. They're second wind, too. Uh, so they're starting to bloom again. I I keep on forgetting to mention this. Um, the hard work, and it's hard work for me. I have been on the fertilizing game. I have been on it, man. Like, I feel good about it. And then part is because it's like, all right, last chance workout, last chance workout. Yeah. Like, you know, let's pour all of ourselves into this. Um, so... So you've so this is the first year you've really fertilized. No, last year was the first year I really fertilized, but I did a half-ass job of it. I did a pretty, I did a better job of it this year, but still could be considered half-ass. Um, like thing, most things got fertilized at least once a month. Right. Um, but they probably would have preferred every two weeks. Um, but this year, this fall now, I've been much more attentive to the things that I've been planting because I'm also much more conscious of your planting in an area that has had food grown in all year, you know? Right. And so I know it. And also I did see some, um, some deficiencies throughout the year. And you know how sometimes you kind of have to experience some issue before you take real action. I mean, I'm human. If you prick me, yeah. do I not bleed? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, you don't <clears throat> No, And I mean, that's how I was with my garden last year. You know, I had issues last year and, Mm -hmm. I learned from it. You know, I had that issue and I bounced back and that's part of what's driving me this year to like stay on top of my game. You know, um, the compost that I produced this year, I'm halfway through and I'm almost a quarter of the way through my beds. So I need more. Um, now I will have more next year and that was the plan. So like when I go, so the last step before I plant is I need to put, I put compost in, but I want to put some, um, a more compost in because I really want to kind of amend that because it's growing. And I feel like because it dried out and got so hot that it just was devoid. I've got to do better Mm -hmm. next year and not completely abandon it. (laughs) Like maybe I should actually water it, you know, and take some time, but um, I'm going to get a couple bags of compost and purchase it and then spread it in there just to have something that's really, you know, it's Mm -hmm. done, done compost. Um, And then I think that's really going to help propel me into the next year but you know i think amending the soil this time of year is great and then also what i'm planning on doing is planning on i I posted 
an article, I guess by the time this comes out, it'll be like a week ago, on Patreon about um, fall mm-hmm. planting your flowers and how there's people that are now under the idea of like, we don't even plant in the spring anymore. We plant everything in the fall that like flower wise. And then it has all fall and winter to get comfortable. And then boom, you get that growth in the spring. So I think I'm going to, and I've been thinking, I knew that about starting some seeds and stuff. I think I'm going to start adopting that just because you're so eager to have that last you know, your gardening season mm-hmm. to last, like get that last hurrah in and then I don't have to worry yeah. about it. You know what I mean? Some so, pleasant surprises in the spring too. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Now the only thing I will say is there is a lot of anxious time and more anxiety around what's going to come up in the spring. Did it get too cold mm-hmm. for it? Did, you know, and you just have to make sure you get it in the ground long enough before it freezes so that it can get comfortable. Yeah, there's a part of it me. It really gets its feet settled. There's a part of me that wants to say um, it's, you know, garden mental health. So if I don't plant anything for the fall that is expected in the spring, I don't have to worry about being anxious or antsy around it. I was really anxious around the garlic and whether or not it was going to come up. Um, so that's what I'd like to say is the word. It's probably, though, I am so lazy and tired by the time we get to fall and trying to figure out where in the hell to put, like, find a space for it. I just throw my hands up and say, no, nah, never mind. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to do yeah. the same thing as it relates to uh, kind of fall bulbs. Um, I wish I was a different person, but I'm not. I planted a lot of bulbs last year and I had a lot of anxiety over mm-hmm. all winter and all my anxiety was true because <laughs> It, they yeah, suck. I'm sorry. They all suck. You hear that? <laughs> you, the ones that sold it to me, they suck. I'm glad you're listening, um, guys. I'm, yeah, you're listening to me. I won't say your name yet. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it was just pitiful. Like, you see a picture and then you see what grew and you're like, really? Like, this isn't even yeah. close. Like, you guys could have done better than that. You know what I mean? So, um, I'm moving mm-hmm. on. Moving on from that and what made it made it and what didn't i'm just i'm planting perennials and i'm going to start them all from seed this year what i don't put in the fall i'm starting from seed and getting them in and i'm moving on with life you know lesson learned this flower game has tripped me up man yeah i mean it's not for the faint of of hearts um let me move on i didn't say i was giving up let me move on to uh, my story because we're approaching the hour mark and I want to make sure we Are have we? time for your, I can't see your <laughs> recipe of the day. Uh-huh. So this was in the phase before I got my first uh, second wind, is it? So this is when I was still tired, right? So I was uh, outside. I had like all of my garden crap outside. Um that morning when I came, like I was coming down to the kitchen, I had those orange honeycomb uh, tomatoes. It's like a little, it's an orange cherry tomato. Oh, I love them. And so I had them like on this little plastic platter and I forgotten about them. A couple of days had passed and some of them had, you know, burst and were starting to rot a little bit. And so, you know, right. what, what loves those that are inside, you know, gnats, fruit flies, they love that. So it's yeah. right by the back door. So I basically took the platter and put it, outside like on this little like um side table that I have on the back porch and so that morning you know I did that and I started milling about working this was on a weekend working in the garden you know doing some things I had some uh some leftovers I was eating you know outside on the the back porch or whatever and so then I came in this is fast forward to the later on that um afternoon and I was pretty much done for the day I still had my garden apron and everything outside but I knew I would basically you know come in and at some point go back outside and pick it up and if worst case scenario there was no rain it'd be fine I'd leave it out there and so I woke up because I clearly took a nap. I woke up and it was dark outside. So and when I looked back, it was around 1030. And I said, oh, crap, let me go out and get the stuff. Now, I opened the back door. And as soon as you step down, you're on the deck. You're on the back porch. Right. I saw something. And the place that the cherry tomatoes were, were like right outside. Like I could basically stand inside of the, the back door and reach them, you know, grab them with my hands. And so I saw something run away and so i yell like get get you know and what i saw run away was had a bushy tail 
And so in my mind, I've convinced myself that it's a squirrel, not the worst thing that could happen. Right. And so by this time, you know, after it had gone, I went and collected all of my belongings from outside, you know, ended up tossing all of those tomatoes because who knows. Right. So I was telling this story to a guy I work with and he's like, you know, it wasn't a squirrel. Right. I'm like, I know it wasn't a squirrel, but that's beside the point. So then we started I'm like mm-hmm. squirrels are nocturnal, aren't they? Maybe it was. And so so no, they're not. And so then we started going through what it could have been. And the only thing I've seen in my garden when it comes to like, you know, creatures that have legs are squirrels, cats. That's it. Like, I don't live in a place where you see rabbits and things of that nature. Um, I've seen possums like in my neighborhood. I've not seen possums in my neighborhood, like in my garden. I've seen um, that's it. That's all. So. I know what it yeah, is. Yeah, I do too. So as I looked at the camera footage, <laughs> well, it was I couldn't because I didn't have the back light on. I couldn't quite get a very clear look at it, but I'm pretty certain it was a raccoon. It being a raccoon, like we all, you you would have had to find another, another co-host because at that point, a raccoon in the garden is one thing. A raccoon at my back door, I, no, I'm not doing those funny cute. TikTok videos with the raccoon that I'm feeding. No, F that. Mm-mm. That's not that's not me. That's Mm-mm. not how I roll. Um, so that ignited me to make sure that I was keeping things extra tidy. Right. You know, yep. because after I came out and scared it away, you know, that thing came back. Of course, it came back. Yeah. You know, so I'm watching on the camera like, God damn it. You know? um, Did you see him? Do you see him come back? I saw him on the camera come back. You should stay up in Mace's ass when he comes. Just spray I a bunch of Mace on him. I would never do that because I feel I safe would. knowing that I'm inside and he's outside. So before that, I had been going outside with my little black light to check for the hornworms. Yeah, mm-hmm. squash all of that, man. <laughs> None of that's happening. Man, me and raccoons, we're done. Like, they have murdered so many oh, of our chickens. Yeah. yeah, I caught them in the act one night. It was yeah. bad, so... I uh yeah no you 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 got to do something about that raccoon and, and if you stop feeding it what you didn't yeah. mean to do he'll go away yeah and if now that I tell the story out loud it actually I'm pretty sure it was two days of those tomatoes sitting out there now that yeah. I think about it did because that was the yeah possums aren't bad well I don't want any of them but um the guy I, I work with said you know do you have any water source near it because they're disgusting creatures but they like to like clean their food which i didn't know I mean, he used to yeah. um, him and his wife used to have like you know kinds of farm animals where they used to live and all that and he's like they like to clean their food or at least dip it in some water before they eat it and i'm like no i'm re- yanking out the hoses i'm removing all kinds of water um so i've been checking obviously i'm going to miss it like i'm not looking at like 12 hours of dark footage um, but I've made sure that I've cleared that entire area. And the reality is it is probably still milling about, you know, but I'm doing things like picking the tomatoes that are volunteers that are outside of the cage. Maybe I'm picking those really early, you know, as soon as they have, you know, there's some blush, some hint of red. Um, and so it's been about a week or so. And so, so far, so good. Um, I've also not gone outside in the dark and I never plan on doing it again. So there's that. <laughs> Well, they they won't attack you unless it's rabid, which you know. Well, good gosh. But they're Thanks. they're they're smart mm. too. So on our chicken coop, we have uh, carabiners that latch everything, and you know, like when you um, deadbolts, mm-hmm. we put those on because they can figure out. They will figure out how to open a deadbolt. Wow with their hands like they're really smart so we have the carabiners on because they they can't get in there but then they chewed a hole in and got in and um i'll tell this story real quick i caught one i caught it i heard the screams in the night from the chicken coop and i got up and i was like son of a bitch he was in there's a second night in a row and he had killed three of our chickens and i was like kelly i was like yelling because i didn't i wanted to see how he Mm -hmm. got in right so he got in and I was like, all right, we got to get rid of him. And he got up and I was like, go get the BB gun. And it ain't going to mm-hmm, kill him. Mm-hmm. And he was up in the tree and I shot him in the stomach. He heard, tonk. And uh, he sat there and he was hissing mm-hmm, at us and mm-hmm. yelling at us. And he was trying to get back in. And we ended up getting it so the chicken coop, we could shut the door yeah. at night. 
and they're completely sealed up and now they can't get now we don't see them at all but man they would circle Mm -hmm. i went out there and i all i could see was glowing eyes with a flashlight all around me yeah so on the camera that's what i saw the glowing eyes and i'm like fuck. yeah did you only see one set oh dear gosh don't be who you trying to tell (laughs) me at least not one set it's only one it's only one Okay, as long as you, because I saw like eight, but see, you got to remember, I live in the woods. Oh, dear so goodness, yeah. It's different, but yeah, it's, man, they're brutal. So, yeah, as long as you clean up the food, mm-hmm, they'll go away. Mm-hmm. You know, unless your neighbor's got cat food out or something. No, you know? no. And interestingly enough, I have never seen one in my compost pile, hmm. ever. I've seen one possum in there. And he comes, He uh, he's a big boy. He comes around every once in a while, but he comes and goes, comes yeah. and goes. So, yeah, I've never seen them in the compost pile, but they will, yeah, they will. And I've never seen them eat anything out of my garden either. Because I was always worried they would come and take the tomatoes off the vine mm-hmm, or something, mm-hmm, you know. Yeah. That would piss, oh, that would piss yeah. me off. <laughs> well, that's the reason why I have the cage baby, but clearly they know how to open the latch on the cage baby is what you're telling me now. <laughs> If they wanted to get in, they could. Mm. Yeah, you just have to change the type mm-hmm. of latch that you use. But anyways, we can talk about raccoons and all that stuff for a long time, but we need to go on to the recipe of the day. A lot of y'all asked, how can you help support the Backyard Gardens podcast? Well, we have been busy and we have created a t-shirt line just for the gardener. To visit our shop, go to the link in the show notes and check out the t-shirts and other goodies we have. Now, these are super special t-shirts designed just for the gardener. So enjoy. Thank you for supporting the Backyard Gardens podcast. And we'll see you guys after the harvest. Are you ready for a canning recipe? Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Yes, this one comes with sidebars and everything. Ooh. Okay, so I made um, some habanero carrot butter. Is the recipe, but I actually used jalapenos because habaneros are too hot for me. Um, and it's it's good. But I say it like that because we're trying to figure out how to yeah. eat it. <laughs> Um, but we made four small jars of it. So all you need, it's really simple, is two pounds of carrots, one cup of water, a cup of white wine vinegar, and you want the more acidity, the better. Three quarters cup chopped onion. So I just called it one onion. Um, lime juice. I'd used three limes, a uh, teaspoon of salt, four cloves of garlic is what it called for. I used eight. And then I used... It calls for three habaneros. I used two and a half jalapenos uh, seeded and chopped. And then I used a bundle of cilantro. And the cilantro is key now because when you hear it, and I posted about it on Instagram and everybody's like, what is it? And I didn't want to say anything because I wanted to put it on here. But the cilantro tells me Mexican. Okay. So what we're doing... Um, as we're going to line our tacos and stuff with mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. and use it as like that. So what Almost you like do a hummus, is like a spread, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, it's when you hear butter, it's, it comes out just like, like a thick baby, mm-hmm. baby food. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I know it's kind of weird. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> I want to read it to you, right? I think it's, cause it's my memory great to have one more way to, to eat carrots though. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, you bring everything except for the cilantro into a boil in a uh, steel or Dutch oven, mm-hmm. whatever, and then reduce the heat and simmer for 30 minutes until the carrots are very soft. And then let them cool for about five minutes. You put all of it, you put every single thing into the food processor in batches. And then you just get into it's really, really soupy, you know, really chopped up. Um, and then you put it back into the, your pot, bring it to a boil, reduce the heat, and then you're going to simmer it uncovered until it gets really mm-hmm. thick and it basically acts like a yeah. butter. And then you put it into a um, put into your jars with uh, the, everything, correct amount of headspace, and you can water bath okay. this. You do not have to uh, pressure can it because it has the acidity of the lime and the vinegar mm-hmm. in it. Now, 
There is a slight worry about what I have canned. I may have put too much acid in it, and it may, just may, burn like straight heartburn when you eat it because of the acid. I'm not so sure yet. Um, If it is, it's not a big deal. Well, it is a big deal because what I canned will be ruined. But as far as recipe goes, I know to cut down certain parts of the city. And if I was going to cut down anything, it would be the lime. I would not change the vinegar at all because that is where your city Mm -hmm. is going to come from for the canning purposes. That's the safety part. So um, this is not the first time I've done something like that. But it definitely, um, when I taste tested it, it burned. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. So, but you, I ate a spoonful of it, so I need to make sure. And it was like an acid burn, not like the yeah. heat or anything like that. Like if you like ever that. take a, sh- you, you know, people take shots of like apple cider vinegar. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, honestly, it's just like mm-hmm, heartburn mm-hmm. is what it is. Um, and so what we do with that is what I'm thinking is if we put it on mm-hmm. something and spread it like it's supposed yeah. to be, it probably won't be as bad because you're going to have all these other yeah, things mixed with it. cutting into that so, taste, yeah. Um, Yep, and that was also because I also cut the recipe in half. But when I did that, I may or may not have, I can't remember exactly what I did, if I cut the lime mm-hmm. in half as well. I don't think I did. Because I think I was like, ooh, I like lime. Let me just <laughs> add extra. You know, but um, I can attest that it does taste good. It's just that afterburn is, is rough. Yeah. So um, that's my user error. But that's me. I'm trying to find different ways to preserve different things this year because I canned a bunch of carrots like normal Mm -hmm. like chopped and canned and then I did more and honestly this is really good Um, so I know that a lot of people actually I'm just going to go on and say everybody struggles to grow Mm -hmm. carrots because they're kind of hard you know how you'll you'll harvest your carrots and you'll get a couple big ones but then you also get a bunch of those little Mm doo-doo ones that's what this recipe is for. In my oh, mind, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is those mm-hmm. little nubs and mm-hmm. little baby carrots and deformed ones and all that. This is perfect for that. So, um, that's what we use. Cause we had multiple bags of carrots and the big ones we chopped and canned normal. And then the deformed ones and stuff we used for this. And, um, seems, you know, seem to work well. Okay. All right. Way to come so. in with a simple canning preserving recipe. Yeah. Oh, and let me just go on the record and say you are going to boil it for, uh, process it for 10 minutes. Oh, okay. When you water bath it. And, yep. And I actually processed it for 15. <laughs> I figured why not give it a couple extra minutes. You know what I mean? It doesn't really make that much mm-hmm. difference. So, um, yeah. If you want to know how to can it. There it is. Look it up or you can check it out on uh, our previous How to Can episode we had way back in the day with Miss Gardner on. So. Okie dokie. Hey, I pulled this up because I want to give it correctly. Uh, www.homedepotrebates with an S. 11%.com. So 11 is 11. So Home Depot Rebates 11%.com. Spread the savings, love. Is. Interesting. I don't have a Home Depot near me, so it sucks. Yeah, I actually went to Lowe's to buy the um, the uh, straw, and I'm just like, now I'm kind of spoiled. Like, I get nothing back for buying this. Yeah. Yeah. So, how much was your straw? Um, 11, 12, 12, 12 bucks for like whatever the. The barrel is. I don't remember what the size is. A bale? Yeah, the bale. Thank you. Barrel. And is it chopped? Um, it is finely shredded, yes. Okay, so you have mm-hmm. it pre-shredded. It's 2.5 okay. cubic feet per the website. Yeah, that's not much. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know what, though? That one so. bit covered like almost the entire front yard. But it's only going to be, I mean, next year, I'll, again, the whole point of me buying it now is that I'm going to need to, that's going to wear down, break down. Um, so that was enough for me to cover that's the front yard garden. Yeah. And so for the purpose of mulch, yeah. I'll need to kind of re-up and add to that. Um, so that's the reason why I went yeah, up there. I got a bale of, I got a bale of straw there. I got to chop up and It says add. the bale covers up to 500 square feet. Not for the purpose that I'm using it for. Well... Yeah. I mean, it depends how deep you mm-hmm, want to put it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're using it to like choke out weeds, yeah, that's not going to last long. But 
I think it's awesome. I like using straw. I think it's pretty too. A lot of people don't, but I think it's, you know, it gives that look that I like. So, and leaves are awesome yeah. too. Hopefully your leaf connect will not yeah, go away. Yeah, I'm hoping away. not. I um, I was looking when I pulled up those tomatoes. That's a lot of where the leaves are. And I'm just like, man, this is the best decision ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the soil is overall is just so soft. You know, all, yeah. I did see a bunch of roly polies there. And I thought about you and I said, we're just going to pretend these are roly polies that are still digging up and eating on the remnants of the wood chips. Because we're going to pretend like yeah. nothing draws in roly polies except wood chips. That's what we're going to pretend. That's the story I'm telling. That's not the truth, guys and gals. I don't know. I have a lot of infant roly polies in my garden right now. I'm not very happy mm-hmm. about but that's okay. All right, everybody. Let's see if I can get this straight. If you want to answer your listener question, you can send it to us on Instagram, YouTube. We'll definitely get it in those places. You can try and put it on your podcast listening station, but there's so many places that we can't get access to them sometimes. So we apologize. Um, if you want us to share a picture of your garden, which we would love to do, um, especially coming into fall and winter, we want to see gardens in all mm-hmm. stages. Uh, DM them to Backyard Gardens TV on Instagram. And if you want us to share anything, just tag us and we will put it in our stories. We'd love to see what you guys gardeners are doing. And am I missing anything? That last piece was use the hashtag BYG podcast. Yes. Uh, if use you want to share BYG something BYG interesting podcast. and fun about your garden. See, I messed up. You were up so every close, time. man. I was getting impressed. I was. I was yeah. getting impressed. I got uh, cocky yeah, at the yeah, end. Yeah. Um, yep, check us out on Patreon, t shirts, all that good stuff. Be safe. I know people wear a mask. It sucks, but that's just part of it. And uh have fun. Enjoy the rest of your garden for the year. Really soak it in. And Batavia, anything? See ya. Thanks for hanging out with us today. If you want to see what we're up to or just stay up to date on all the announcements regarding the show or anything gardening, then you can follow us on Instagram at Backyard Gardens TV. We love seeing what you guys are doing. So use hashtag BYG podcast in your post and we'll be sharing your gardens with the Backyard Gardens community. And check us out on YouTube at Backyard Gardens where we will post this show, all of our other shows, clips, and then also some gardening tips and just gardening entertainment. And you can see us at our website at BackyardGardensTV.com. But that's it for today's show. So help us as we learn to grow and grow from change. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. We'll call this one a wrap. Now you know why people feel like celebrating at harvest time. All over the world, people have feasting and good times when the crops have been gathered in.